let's go now to our ring announcer Paul LaFleur. Ladies and gentlemen Anheuser-Busch Productions presents in association with the Houston Boxing Association and Tri-City Promotions the Le Paz Mexico wearing white trunks with black trim weighing in at 137 and three quarter pounds with a professional record of 28 wins four losses 15 KOs currently ranked number fifth, eighth in the world by the WBC Roque Montoya and in the blue corner from Toya Baja Puerto Rico wearing gray trunks with red trim weighing in at 138 pounds with a professional record of 23 wins one loss 19 wins by KO the former lightweight champion of the world currently ranked number one by the WBC Edwin Rosario your referee is Luis Rivera 10 rounds Rosario reigning for a year and a half is the WBC lightweight champ his only loss November 84 when he lost the WBC title to Jose Luis Ramirez we said standing room only 400 fight fans here in New Albany New York tonight turned away as Rosario and Montoya begin round number one Rosario has to be at least a slight favorite. Absolutely. Only because of the guys he fought, also because of the speed and punching power. As you can see right now, he's jumping on Montoya fast, which I figured he may do. Because he knows Montoya is a slow starter, and uh, movement gives him problems. Right now he's giving him head and body feints, throwing right hands to the body, left hooks to the head. He's starting off pretty quick. knockdowns in a single round and the fight is over. No standing eight count in effect for this fight. The judges, three of them, working on the round system. There'll be supplemental points possible that could decide even rounds and the referee not involved in the decision. I'm watching Montoya. He's, he's throwing his jab. He's, out, he's pulling back. He's hesitating. He's real tight. I could either credit that to being front of a crowd, strange crowd, or else did he respect Rosario's right hand that much. Moments ago, Rosario landing a good left to the face of Montoya. If there's a criticism of Edwin Rosario, it's been throughout his career that he hasn't used his left jab enough. And he has a very good jab. But if you watch Montoya, you can see he's tentatively throwing his jab out there. So he's just throwing it out there, laboring it more or less. And he's being, uh, he's offering Rosario a chance to counter with the right hand. Rosario in the gray trunks, Montoya in the white trunks. Chapo on the red waistband of Edwin Rosario, his nickname. I believe this is the Spanish Chapo. Just to correct you a little bit. Uh, we got to anglicize that. Which means, but I believe, monkey, monkey. And if I'm wrong, you're sure of that, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Rosario taking things to Montoya, who retaliates there with a good left. Yep. See, right now, I see Rocky Montoya standing two, st uh, two straight up for Ros Rosario. He has to be bend his body. Give that up for body movement. Right now he's standing straight in line for his punches. Coming up to the end of round one in this 10 round lightweight elimination fight. And we'll keep it right here. Go into the corners. There's Montoya. Coming up yesterday from Reynosa, Mexico. Both fighters tend to be 
elusive in expression. Neither one real charismatic. Well, yeah, they're both very, very uh, serious fighters. Both are, plus they're both in front of a strange crowd. Um, Montoya more so than Rosario, since Rosario's fought all over the country and the world. Livingstone Bramble, the current WBA lightweight champ, Who's and of that? course, you, know, I, you know you've heard of him. I don't remember his name. Hector Macho Camacho, the WBC lightweight title holder, and Rosario and Montoya tonight bidding to meet Camacho next year. And Jimmy Paul out of Detroit, the IBF champ, the NABF is vacant. Check it out. I'm not familiar with them names. <laughs> you never uh, have fought Camacho, have you? No, it's the one regret I have in my career, believe me. Here we go, round number two. Ken Wilson, Ray Boom Boom Mancini, ringside. See, right now, like I said, Montoya's pulling back. Rosario's jab is snapping the head back. Even when he doesn't hit him with it, he backs him off, he backs him up. be backed into a corner, stepping forward, slowing Rosario down a little bit. Neither fighter landing much in the exchange. Montoya is very, very awkward. Throws his punches, leaning to the wrong side. He uh, seems off balance, but he's throwing punches. That's the hardest type of guy to fight, too. Rosario, very classic boxer, puncher combinations. He slips punches very well, as you can see. It. To one of uh, Rosario's main attributes is his uh, he holds a good center of gravity you can see he bends low he's always got his balance he always comes up punching which is very difficult for most fighters rosario in the corner montoya trying to land a right uppercut <laughs> Rosario kind of walking into a short right there, catching on the ribs. Second round. The crowd waiting to explode. That crown to fight for the NABF lightweight title last April, losing as we mentioned in 12 to Hector Camacho. 15 seconds to go, round number two. Edwin Rosario, Rocky Montoya. They're feeling each other out a little bit, not quite as much action as in round number one. That's the end of round number two. Tonight, Luis Rivera, Montoya in white trunks, Rosario in the gray. How do you rate the first two rounds, Greg? Rosario won the first two rounds, but Montoya is showing that he's he's going to be there. He's showing right now that he's very determined and that he's going to be there for a while. I think uh, Rosario's fighting his fight. He's throwing, hitting all the punches that he wants him with. lightweight champ. But I think Rosario has to be careful that this, uh, this Montoya throws punches from off the weird angles. He may get second time. The contrast that you pointed out last round, very distinct. The fact that Rosario, well balanced, seems very well organized in the ring. Montoya off balance and clearly awkward. Yes. Montoya has seen fights of Rosario against Ramirez when he got beat for a title, or it's just his normal stuff.
himself, but he's throwing uppercuts. And that is what Ramirez knocked Rosario out with. Got him with uppercuts. And I'm sure his corner is telling him to throw that uppercuts. He'll catch Rosario with that. Rosario's only loss, losing the WBC lightweight title to Jose Luis Ramirez, the southpaw from Mexico, some 13 months ago. See, Montoya is showing he's going to be there. Rosario has to fight. There again is what I'm saying. When you stand in front of him, he can hurt you. He can, he'll make you fight. Movement gives him problems, though. These two fighters really going at it here in round number three. A couple of good shots from Rosario after he took a bit of a beating in the corner from Rocky Montoya. Cover from being knocked down by that Rosario left hand in round three. Rosario, number one ranked WBC lightweight. Montoya, number 10 ranked WBC lightweight. Montoya comes from a long line of proud champions. Being a Mexican champion has a sense of honor. And these, you know, if you look down the line, the Ruben Olivares and uh, so on, uh, Vincent Salvadores, they are proud champions. Jose Luis Ramirez. And when you get hurt them, knock them down, whenever they're hurt, they're going back to that harder. And I'm expecting a lot of fireworks from here on. Montoya is really, he's going to come out and start fighting. I mean, not that he hasn't been, but I mean, he's fighting. fight to the very end. And even won the last couple rounds on a few uh, on the super cards. Montoya trying to work inside to the body. Being turned aside by Rosario. I think you always have to worry about Edwin Rosario is that right wrist of his. He's broken it twice in his career. I always wonder if that's in the back of the fighter's mind. Absolutely. Anytime you break a bone, of any sort, it's always weaker than, than, uh, than what God gave it. So, uh, from what I understand, they fused the wrist bone to the, to the arm bone to make it one solid piece. So, you know, it's, it, it reinforces it, but I'm sure that's in the back of his mind that if he lands the right shot, it can break. But you can't, you can't think about it when you're fighting. Joined us late, Rocky Montoya, knocked down by Rosario in round three. Now see, I'm, I'm noticing something in Montoya. Uh, Rosario's hitting him with left hooks, right hands, and he's making him stop for, for an instant, making him think about the next punch. As you'll see, he'll stop for a minute and start and look, look for the next punch. Montoya getting back together here in this round. And the round four to our local station. This 10-round fight being judged on the round system through four. 
Edwin Rosario, the former WBC lightweight champ, has been very effective against Rocky Montoya, including a third round knockdown. A couple of good lefts for Montoya, catching the glove of Rosario. into the corner. Slides out. One of the criticisms of Rosario in terms of being a very popular fighter as you were, Boom Boom, is the fact that he is very mechanical. Good right that time. He doesn't have a lot of flash, a lot of expression. doesn't really have that magic charisma. Wow. It's very flattering, but I'll tell you, he gets the job done. He's When I was fighting, people thought, who, said, who do you think is the best lightweight other than yourself. I said, I don't know if I am the best lightweight. I feel I am, but I think the one with the most God-given talent is the one who's over. This kid is tremendous. This kid does things that, man, I just watch him off. I enjoy watching him fight. There are many in this game who share your feelings. Really, he's one of the great lightweights to do all. I would like to regain that title. His only knock is people came on in the Ramirez fight, questioned his chin. Is it able to stand up to a good punch? And uh, he had Ramirez knock twice, and Ramirez came back and a few good shots and, and uh, took him out. This is the fifth round, the scheduled 10-rounder. Turned him away here tonight. 
33,000 jammed into this Coliseum. Latham, New York. Between Albany and Troy. And these are real fight fans. And they're seeing a royal lightweight battle here tonight. Coming up to the end of round number six. Rosario and Montoya and a local break coming up. seem to be in command and have things well in hand in the first four rounds. But the Mexican, Rocky Montoya, has come back with a strong fifth and also an outstanding sixth round in this ten-round Montoya in the white, Rosario in the gray. The winner expecting to fight for the WBC lightweight title, most likely in the spring of 1986. Hector Camacho, needless to say, will be interested in how things go in the ring here tonight. Camacho coming on the recent non-title victory over Freddie Roach and has a tentative title defense ago against Sergio Zambrano and there goes Montoya down for the second time tonight. He was knocked down in the third. He's knocked down by Rosario here in round it was, seven. It was a good body shot. Good body shot. Might have broke the rib. And it's over. Edwin Rosario, the former WBC lightweight champ who lost his title in November of 84 to Jose Luis Ramirez of Mexico beats the former Mexican lightweight champ Rocky Montoya with a knockout here in the seventh round tonight and now Rosario Rayman Event Productions is Willie Martinez president presentation under the supervision of the Florida State Athletic Commission Robert Shevin chairman commissioners Jimmy Resnick and Mars Grady and Colonel George Porter, Executive Director. This bout, the officials designed and assigned for WBC Julio, WBA Julio Castillo, the judges, Rogelio Perez, Jesus Pelias, Warren Mayo. The timekeeper, Sam Granolnik, counting for the knockdowns, Richard Graver. The doctors, Jack Grossman, Theodore Struhl, and the referee, Ernesto Magana from Mexico City. And the principals in the blue corner, from Puerto Rico, wearing the gold and blue trunks, weighing 135 pounds, with a record of 23 and 2, with 19 KOs, the former WBC lightweight champion, Edwin Rosario. Rosario. And his opponent in the red corner, from Hamilton Township, New Jersey, wearing the black and check trunks, Weighing 135 pounds with a record of 24, one and one with 15 KOs. The World Boxing Association champion, Livingston Bramble. I want to hold the mic up to your face. Into the face. Right. Okay. Now, 
So we're just about set to get started here. One issue that we probably should touch on, Larry Merchant, and that is Remember, the dreadlocks worn by Livingstone Bramble. Something of a story here. Yeah, those dreadlocks are sort of like knots in the hair that some fighters complained about. Now his hair is more braided and hanging down, but he's been warned that if it gets in the way of, of Rosario, that the referee is authorized to clip it off with scissors. I don't know if the referee has a license to barber here in Florida or not. This is a new issue on me. <laughs> I think there is one, perhaps a bottom line here in our conversations with both these fighters. We talked about some of the things they said already. Livingstone Bramble had a simple quote. He said, if you see him take a step back, the fight's mine. And it is a fact that Rosario does not fight backwards, going moving backwards very well. Rosario said, you won't see me move backwards, you'll only see me move side to side. Just remember that both of these fighters are, cust are accustomed to going that after their opponents. So this first round figures to be an important round for dominance, for territory, to determine who is going to be the boss. Both of them are looking at it that way, Ray. One thing about it, though, Bramble has always been the one that would make the fight very aggressive inside and outside. This time he says he's going to use the left jab. Let's see if whether or not it works. Rosario seems extremely loose here, just ahead of the opening bell. Rosario, in some people's estimation, was thinking perhaps a little bit more about his narrow loss to Hector Camacho than he was about the fight upcoming tonight with Livingstone Bramble. Round one, set to go. Whoa, that was close. <laughs> Crowd into this fight right off the bat. Good left hook, the biggest weapon of Edwin Rosario. Bramble said, look for all kinds of fireworks in the first round. Because you have to establish dominance, in the words of Livingstone Bramble. Bramble puts a lot behind that left jab. You notice he puts his entire body. In fact, he mentioned the fact his sparring part is playing is like his right hand. Very potent, very crisp. With Rosario, he has to get a lot of angles. In fact, he said he won't move back. He was side to side, angles. Pretty good right hand by Rosario. 